we will talk about Stronghold and how it ties into XLM, the SDF that I talked about in my deep dive on XLM yesterday. Uh, and I will include that in the link below. But um, I truly appreciate the uh, comments on that one. I got a lot of good and uh, positive feedback. And I want to uh, check into this as well because I haven't gone that far into this. So I want to take the chance to do what people want and to find out much more about it in the process as well. So old XX, um, they, he, I don't know, uh, has this mind map or whatever um, on stronghold and primarily xlm and the sdf but uh, it ties the two together in a very straightforward way and i'll uh, expand upon it as well so the overall thing that we uh explained in the xlm deep deep dive in the link in the description is how ibm hyper ledger and the sdf interconnect through a thing called world wire and if you uh check this out which we will hear here in a second um it all operates off of xlm goes through stronghold which is the liquidity provider out into the uh market itself and then it ends up in um everyone's hands uh now this is the uh bridge currency model here so we are talking about a uh a cbdc on uh, 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 on uh, uh, xlm so we did uh discuss a little bit about that in the previous video as well and there are projects out there that are already um using xlm uh, as the f f f foundation right so one of those was b-i-t-t -T. uh i guess you just pronounce it as bit right but that is one uh example it's the only one that i'm aware of off of the top of my head right right now but uh let's just run through this real quick before we get a little bit farther into everything else so clearing and settlement with finality happens in near real time the uh, digital asset to settle transactions serves as an, an agreed upon uh, value exchanged between parties as well as integrating payment instruction messages that's tying back to iso 200 2022 which uh, the XLM runs on a protocol that is compliant with that. So then that leads us into an open source decentralized protocol for digital currency to fiat money with low cost mm -hmm. transfers, which allows cross border transactions between any pair of currencies. Same thing that we all know that XLM has really been uh, involving themselves in for some time now same kind of thing with xrp as well uh it looks like xrp is more on the institutional side and so far xlm is more on the end user side but that doesn't necessarily mean uh, they can't uh play t together as well so what would it look like to actually issue a cbdc on xlm uh, pretty straightforward here. So you have a central bank, you have a account that the CBDC comes from, the account that it goes to, to a commercial bank, which all of us are unfortunately a part of, and then it would go out to each of us. Now, the commercial bank can uh, connect with the authorization API to the central bank in order to actually transact in all of this. So I don't think that's a lot of information that we shouldn't already be fairly uh, familiar with, other 
than the introduction of Stronghold. So they uh, talk a lot about things in pretty general terms, uh, payment and financial infrastructure, transform payments, uh, real-time payments, just trying to make things much quicker and easier compared to how they are now. Um, so real-time clearing settlements and micro payments, which I know that um, drops got in with as a part of the Fed now uh, launch as well. So that's kind of what we're talking about here, but they're again, we're working with IBM, therefore XLM, right? And one of the immediately interesting things I found was that Prime Trust is involved here. And if you remember from my fairly unpopular video from a couple of days ago about the, uh, the Ripple acquisition of Fortress Trust, um, if you scroll down here, their CEO was um, the CEO of Prime Trust until 2020. Um, so then if we go into, uh, where is it? Um, yeah, so if we go back here, we got IBM and Prime Trust, right? So I thought that was a really interesting connection just because it's basically indirectly saying that Ripple and the SDF are uh, at least uh, discreetly working with each other or around each other, at least. I think that XLM and XRP are much more tied together than we are being shown at this point in time, but that's just my personal opinion off of the things that I know now. So if we uh, go to XX once more, yesterday he had this tweet um, that no one seems to think that XLM is really prime for CBDCs, but he reminded us of uh, the, agree the partnership that we talked about the other day from 2021. And if we look into it a little bit more here, um, this was the global CBDC challenge that we have already talked about. And uh, it essentially says here, by running BITS, a digital currency management system on XLM, they're offering a complete solution for monetary authorities to issue CBDCs. Uh, XLM is well positioned to be the public network of choice for the issuance of CBDCs. So that's some interesting verbiage there just to uh, remind us. And the uh, co-founder of Stronghold actually uh, constructed a uh, CBDC-like stablecoin technology on Ripple for uh, more efficiency in the remittance payments area. He has made Ripple or he has made XRP related and XLM related stablecoins. Um, he talks a little bit more about uh, his experience in the past there, but uh, that was very interesting to me because, again, we've got people who have had experience with Ripple XRP and SDF XLM. So everything just continues to unfold. Um, I had a uh, thing about... Um, IBM's IBM Worldwide Stellar. Yeah, so actually it's just right here and I apologize for not having that up. But um, it essentially just says using blocks chain and the SDF pr pr protocol, um, they're able to uh, provide 
um, services on uh, on XLM. Essentially, this wasn't the same one I opened up earlier, but um, it was a page. Yeah, I think it was this one, maybe. No. I'm going to try one more time. I think this is it. Yeah. So we directly talk about IBM and, or IBM and XLM and the SDF protocol for uh, atomic payment clearing and settlement in near real time. So that ties up all of this fairly well. And uh, for some more um, context, if you go to uh, the token that Stronghold has, which is SHX, and you open their white paper here. If you go through this, I found some very, very, very interesting stuff that uh, all of my explanations up until now should have uh, began to hint at. All right, so key partnerships, IBM, SDF, select investors none other than Ripple with their XRP, right? So then we go through, um, just explains a lot about what it actually provides and how it works. Um, kind of the same thing as XLM and XRP, uh, in all honesty. Um, if you, okay, so then again, if we go down here, um, we have XLM and XRP right here. ISO 222 and uh, multi-ledger compatibility and transaction processing. That's very interesting because again, we're talking about interoperability, which we talked in that, um, which we talked about in that XLM deep dive as well. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff going on here, ISO, FedNow as well, uh, prepare for FedNow instant payments. I think this is from um, earlier or late 2022. And uh, that was all of the most obvious things that I saw that really popped out to me at least. And uh, I think that this is a very interesting project that has a lot more tie-in with the two largest projects that I'm interested in, which is XRP and XLM. I think I really want to uh, learn much more about this as well. I do have another um, graphic that I do want to um, share as well, but that will be for next time, probably. So as of right now, um, I hope you got something out of this. I apologize for it uh being a little long and extra awkward um i was up for 24 hours yesterday um i got up at 2 40 a.m to catch a flight and uh it, it was just a very long day <laughs> so uh but hey i i hope everyone's here for the content and not um hoping that i say everything 100 percent correctly and clearly because uh you're probably not gonna ever have that i'm authentically me so i will see y'all in the next video